Thank you, Commissioner. It is about time to rain, isn't it? I do want to thank the Hall of Fame and the writers, that, especially the writers that uh, voted me in and all the great uh, Hall of Famers that are here. Really would like to do so that I can't forget, and I'm going to keep it short, forget uh, some of the stops I made along the way. Um, I would just like to, for all y'all to know today is one of the greatest days of my life. Today is a day that I'll always cherish. Every baseball player dreams about being a big league baseball player, and now here I am in the Baseball Hall of Fame. For me, that dream has finally come true. That dream has always, has already come true as Fergie and Rod Crew came before me. And I'm glad to be with these two great guys and a part of their special day. Now, I would like to try to tell you where I came from and the stops I made along the way. I first started playing ball in the cow pasture <clears throat> with my dad, who would play with Jim and me every chance he got. I remember our neighbors saying, all those prairie boys want to do is play baseball. And their dad is even worse. I never will forget those uh, high school and semi-pro days out in farm life in Williamson, North Carolina, where I came from. There are many people here, though, that helped me and, uh, to get here. My high school coaches were great, especially Roger Thrift. The scouts who talked to San Francisco Giants into signing me, a guy named Tim Murchison, and the greatest bird dog scout in eastern North Carolina, a guy named Earl Smith. My minor league coaches kind of led me through from Seaball, a guy named Richie Klaus, Ray Murray, Red Davis, and a lot of my pitching coaches, Larry Jansen, who I had for 10 years, Warren Spahn, who I had for a teammate and then pitching coach, Chuck Estrada, Dave Duncan, Sid Hudson, they all helped along the way. And I don't want to forget some of the radio and TV people People like Lon Simmons, Harry Carey, Skip Carey, and my friend Dave Niehaus. My years in San Francisco gave me a chance to play with some of the baseball greatest. I look over at first base, and there was a great Willie McCovey. I had to follow her in the pitching rotation by the great Juan Marichal. And then the guy that I learned more how to play the game of baseball, how to pitch hitters, the greatest player that I saw, Willie Mays. <clears throat> I played with these guys for 10 years, and when I got to Cleveland, I looked in center field, and Willie wasn't there. I knew I was in trouble. In 1962, my first big league manager was Alvin Dark. My first general manager was Chubb Feeney. But it wasn't until a long day in 1964 that I finally got the, my job step towards being here today. I was the only pitcher left in the bullpen and a double hitter against the New York Mets. The sucker game lasted 23 innings. When I got to the mound to start the 13th inning, my catcher Tom Haller says, kid, it's time to put something on the ball. Well, after a, a, we made a triple play, a few double plays, the Dell Crandall pinch hit for me in the 23rd inning, got a base hit to score Jim Davenport. That's what I needed to get started. The next year, Herman Franks became the giant manager. I love playing for Herman better than anybody. I probably got away with a lot. When Herman left, it wasn't far, just a few short weeks, uh, I was on the way to Cleveland, my first trade. Well, I was 33 years old then, and these ball players know what I'm talking about. You could hear them say, well, he's getting old, he's about finished. Well, in 1972, I had my greatest year. I won 24 games in the American League Cy Young Award. In 1974, Cleveland had a special team. 
They backed me up, and I won 15 games in a row, which is American League record. But in 1975, I was on the way to Texas. See, Commissioner, I did make a lot of stops along the way. But there's where I got to know one of the owners, a guy named Brad Corbett, and he became a special friend. Also learned in Texas, if you get in fights, and we got in a few, if you would follow guys like Pat Corrales, Willie Horton, and John Ellis, there was no one for you to fight. In 1978, we got another new manager. And another, we want young pitchers on this staff. So I was on the way to San Diego. And what a great place to play baseball. There, in 1978, I only had to pitch about seven innings of every game I started. Now this is the first time that I had a guy named Raleigh Fingers. He came in and helped me win the Cy Young Award that year. <clears throat> but after a couple years there, I went back to Texas, and before that year was up, I was in New York with the Yankees. Then even for me came 1981, free agency. I signed with the Atlanta Braves and Bobby Cox, and what a pleasure they made that year. In 1982, I finally got Dan O'Brien, general manager of Seattle Mariners, to give me a chance to win number 300 in Seattle. Dan says, come on out to Arizona. If you make the team, fine. Well, that was a year that every 30 days my contract got renewed. There, my manager, Renee Latchman, was even 10 years younger than I. But Latchman, he was a special manager. He could he knew how to handle losing as well as winning. But I can remember that day in July of 1983, he got fired and I got released on the same day. Well, I went on to Kansas City and I finished my career there. And of course, you know, it wouldn't be fitting if I didn't say a few words about those umpires. I really knew them by their first names. We seemed to have a lot of visits out there on the mound. My catchers was the one that called all those pitches. <laughs> Starting with Tom Howler, Dick Dietz, Ray Fossett, Dave Duncan, and the best throwing catcher I saw, Jim Sundberg. I, I also remember a guy named John Ellis. The guy would get a base hit, get on first, and he would say, don't worry about the guy on first. One pitch later, he would say, don't worry about the guy on second. One pitch later, he said, don't worry about the guy on third. Next pitch, he says, I'll tag him if he comes home. <laughs> and yet, also, the guy that caught number 300, Bud Bullen. Bud is here today. <clears throat> I had a chance to play with uh, just some really great guys, some of the greatest baseball players to ever pick up a baseball. I'd just like to mention a few that I haven't mentioned previously. The great Ozzie Smith, Dale Murphy, Bobby Bonds, Dave Winfield, Reggie Jackson, George Brett, Phil Nickro. These guys and many more helped me to be here today. But the most special people in the world who helped me these, over these years are my family and very close friends. My greatest friend, Booker Scales, became ill and could not be here today. But buddies like Joe and Coach Chillis, Jim and Chesson, they are here today. I want to thank them. <clears throat> a few of the people that played a great part also that are not with us any longer. Dick Jones, A.J. Marie Manning, and my dad. Boy, he would love this day, that's for sure. And one, one who um, was just very special, Blanche, the dear and special lady who supported me 100% over the years, who was the mother of my children. My mom, Ruby Perry, is here also today, and mom, thanks for coming. <clears throat> my sister, Carolyn, her husband, Richard, my brother, Jim, who had us a few pretty good years yourself, Jim, but you should have won a few more when you beat those Nick Rose. 
Also, Mary and Jamie Conjano are part of my family now, and my wife, Carol. Thank you all for being here today. To my kids, who I want to say a special thanks. They remember the good days and the bad days. They had to put up with me. Amy, my first daughter, and her husband, Francisco. Beth and her husband, Keith, and Keith Jr. come in November. And then there's Allison. Well, Allison, when she was a little girl, would find the rioters and they, she would slip up to them and says, I know where my dad hides the stuff. <clears throat> and they were all excited and they says, where? He hides it in his garage. Also, my best friend and my son, Jack. Jack, I can remember, I used to carry him in the clubhouse, and some of his first words that he spoke at home was clubhouse words. <laughs> it wasn't long before his mother corrected him, and sometimes I really tuck him on road trips when he's very young, and then his second words was, I want room service. <laughs> Jack got me in a lot of trouble. I want to take a special thanks to, to everyone that made this possible. I know I've left some out, but uh, hey, it's a great day. I love you all. Thank you.